Hi fellow flowers, Violet here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make the airplane. Let's jump right into it. What you're going to need is some Rex lace or plastic craft string that you can get at Michael's or your local craft store. I have four colors here, but I only ended up using three for this. And I'm also using the Easy Gimper tool. So I'm really excited to announce that this video is sponsored by Pepperell Braiding Company or Pepperell Crafts, who sent me everything that you're seeing in this video today. They were beyond generous and sent me all of these colors. They have holographic, they have pearlized, and they have tie-dye string. They have like the greatest variety on their website that you can't find anywhere else. But really the highlight of Pepperell is this easy gimper tool that makes starting a lanyard so easy. If you're a beginner, this is truly the best way to get into making a lanyard is through this easy gimper tool, which is available on their website with all those colors that I mentioned. And you can also get combo packs that include the easy gimper. But for you fellow flowers, they've offered us this discount code that's on the screen. If you plug this in at checkout, you will get a free easy gimper tool with your purchase. You can also use this QR code to scan with your phone if you'd like to check out their website for more. So without further ado, let's look at how we can actually start a lanyard using this thing. I started by cutting two pieces of string to be about 50 inches in length. And my first string, which is this white one, I'm inserting into the Easy Gimper tool slots one and three. And then I'm going to grab it at the end. So I grab both ends of the white and pull it tight. So that way it's even on both sides of the string. And then I'm going to take my second color, which is this blue, and I'm going to insert that into the number four slot and the number three slot. So I'm, I'm adding these to like the back of the easy gimper tool. So that way when I flip it over, I can see all the numbers and I have like the strings popping out. So the, you're inserting into the back of the Easy Gimper and then pulling them straight through the front side of it. And then I'm grabbing the ends and pulling that tight to get it even like so. And voila. So now we're going to flip this over. And this is where like the magic truly comes in. So you'll see that there are these numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 on here. And what you're going to do is look at this number. So this is number one. We're bringing string number one down in between strings two and three. And then I'm going to come over here to number two. I'm going to bring number two over one and in between three and four. And number three, we're going to bring this guy up in between one and four. And to finish this all off, I'm going to grab string number four here. And I'm going to go over string number three and underneath string number one. We pull this guy through and then we can give this a tug make it all tight and voila like you literally just started a lanyard like all by yourself like is this not amazing this is amazing the next great thing about this is how easy it is to do a box stitch or a circle stitch with it we're going to do the circle stitch so we're going to bring this white string down over the two the number two on the easy gimper then we'll grab this white string and we're going to bring it up to the four and hold that with our fingers there. Then you see this blue string that's over the three. We're going to bring this over this white string and underneath this guy over here and straighten that out. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to grab the other blue string over here and I'll go over the string that's on the two and underneath the string that's on the four. And we can pull this all tight. And you keep kind of like repeating that pattern um, of going off to the side. But hopefully this allows you to visualize what's happening with a circle stitch versus a box stitch. And once you're feeling comfortable, you can just pull this right out. And voila, you've started your lanyard and you're ready to go. So for the airplane, I'm going to do 10 circle stitches. So let me do like nine more and then we'll come back. All right, and 10 stitches later, we are ready to do a turn. So to do so, I'm gonna grab this blue string that's like facing backwards, and I'm going to wrap it underneath my white and kind of loop it over. And then for the other side of the blue, I'm just gonna bring it straight down. And with my white strings, I'm gonna weave over this as if I didn't just totally do something really weird. 
So don't worry if you don't understand this. I have a video that I'll link down below that'll take you to my video, how to make the 90 degree turn with lanyards. Um, if you need a little bit more like step-by-step -step explanation, and that's kind of like an intermediate step. And that's what kind of makes this an intermediate project is just doing that 90 degree turn. And then later we're gonna add a couple of strings. Um, but yeah, I'll post links down below if you need that help. So for now, I'm going to do 10 more circle stitches going in this new direction, and then I will come back. So voila, here we are again. And I'm gonna use the Easy Gimper tool again to add some string. I'm going to bring all my strings into those positions again. So I'm gonna take my white strings and I'm gonna put the into positions one and three, feeding it in through the back, pulling it out the front. Then I'll grab the other white string. I'm gonna put this one into position three, like so. And then we'll grab the blue and do the same for positions four and two. Cool. And now that we're here and everything's like a little bit tight, I'm going to go ahead and start a stitch basically. So I'm going to do the same thing where I bring the string that's in position one um, down between two and three, bring two over one in between three and four, and then three up and then four is going to go over three and underneath one. Da -da. And before we pull this tight though, this is where we want to add a string. So I'm not gonna like tighten this down all the way. And here I have a string that I measured to be about like 50 inches or so again. Um, you might be able to get away with like going like 45 if you wanna like conserve string or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm going to insert this in between my two white strings that I already have in there. And then I'm gonna grab both ends and pull that to the middle so that way it's even on both sides and now is kind of like the tricky part where you have to make sure that when you're weaving over and under that you're doing so in the right order so that way it doesn't all fall apart um, and I think this is where like a lot of people tend to struggle because they might do it in the opposite order and then of course it falls apart um, but to do that you kind of just look at what direction is the string that's, the, for the string that's already in there, what direction is it going? So this white string that's all the way on the, on the right, it's facing up. So I need to have a white string that faces down right next to it, right? So I'm going to take this string and I've gone over the blue string and underneath um, the second string. So that way now I have, now I have two strings, right, that are pointed in the same direction. You can see these two strings are pointing down. So I need to go in between those so that way I get that alternating one string going up, one string going down, one string going up, one string going down. So if this is kind of tricky, but I need to take this string and go underneath this blue in between here. And I'll pull him through. And now you see that I'm getting that classic pattern of one string going down, one up, one down, one up. And I can pull this all tight and it all works. So if you, if you don't get here, you probably put two strings in the same direction next to each other um, and that simply won't work so um just you know it, it'll take some practice but you'll get it um and when you're ready you'll be able to pull the easy gimper tool off and then just tighten it up and there you go you've added a string so this will help you kind of get the hang of adding strings now i will do five more of the twist stitch and then we will come back and we will add one more string to make this kind of like a quad sort of fella. So fast forward again and I am on my sixth stitch, but I haven't tightened it down yet because I'm going to insert another string. This one is about, again, kind of like 50 inches or so. And I just inserted it in between the two blue strings that I already have in there. And now it's kind of the same principle of I want to do over under, but I want to do so so that I still get that up and down pattern. 
So based off of what I have to work with now, on the right, this blue string is pointing up. So I need a string next to it that's going to be pointing down. So I'm going to point this guy up, but then I know that for my other string, it needs to go in between those guys. So that way I get that pointed down. So I'm gonna scoot this guy over towards the left. And now I need to come in between these two strings and weave over and under. So let me grab this guy that's back here, right here. And he is going to go, I kind of have to dig, I'm gonna to have to dig for that white string that's right there, but I'm gonna go back there. Excuse my Band-Aid. <laughs> I'm trying to make Band-Aids cool again. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna go under this white string right here. And then we're gonna come in between these guys here and you kind of have to like move them out of the way. And we'll go under there and we'll pull this guy through. So now you see that I have that pattern of um, string going down, then it's going up, and then it's going down, and then it's going up. So again, if, if something looks wrong, it could be perhaps you did it in the wrong order and you have like an up, up, down, down, or an up, down, down, up, something crazy. Um, but yeah, just try to really get that up and down pattern and you should be all set. From here, we are going to do 15 of the twist stitches, and then we're going to drop some strings so that way we can get kind of the front nose of the aircraft and the propeller going. So I'm gonna fast forward through this part again, and we'll come back once I have done 15 stitches. And voila, we are 15 stitches ahead now. So you can see that we kind of have like the tail of the aircraft and then it goes into the fuselage. And now we really want to create kind of that, that classic nose look with the propeller. And so to do that, I'm going to drop um, some of these strings. So I'm going to go back down and to like a normal box stitch um, with just four strings instead of eight, which means I need to leave four of these strings out. Um, so it kind of, as long as you pick one string from each side, it's kind of okay, whichever one you choose. Um, and then we're going to again, do a box stitch and pull that tight. The strings may resist you at first, but you'll just want to go in and do another stitch on top of it. And once you tighten that second stitch down, it'll help tighten that first one. Um, and from here, we're going to do four more stitches. So for a total of five, you'll have that stitch where you dropped the strings and then like four more. So a total of about five. Um, and you're free to make this longer than five or shorter than five based off of kind of how you want your aircraft to look. But once I had about five in there, I was pretty happy with it. So I give it a, a good squeeze, a good tug, and I, I'm going to leave that. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to trim off the other strings that I had left out from before trim these all off and notice how I'm leaving these um the strings in the front I'm leaving these ones on um and I'm just going to keep kind of like going back and tightening them but the idea is that you want to kind of have the strings hold down themselves so you're going to tighten it leave it for a minute let the strings rest come back tighten it a little bit more um and then kind of keep doing that maybe like three to five times and then we'll trim this down and we'll get kind of the propeller look but we're going to let those strings rest for now because I just gave them a tug um, and this is going to help kind of like finishing it off so it doesn't fall apart like super crazy on you and in the meantime we're going to make the horizontal stabilizer with those strings that I just trimmed off so you don't have to worry about like wasting too many strings or anything here um, and we're going to basically start a circle stitch, start a box stitch, start a circle stitch. You can use the easy gimper tool again if you'd like or just freehand it, whatever you like. Um, we're gonna grab these in the middle and start a circle stitch. And once you have that started, I did about seven or eight stitches um, and then I crossed over. Um, again, you're welcome to go longer or shorter based off of how you like your aircraft to look. Um, but I'm doing seven circle stitches now. Now, fast forward, I'm on my like eighth stitch and I'm going to initiate the stitch, but I'm not going to tighten it up quite yet because I want to throw this on the back of the aircraft here. So I'm going to insert the airplane onto the stitch and now I can go ahead and tighten this up. So voila, and again, like 
the strings may resist you a little bit but once you tighten up that second stitch it should kind of like tighten up the first stitch for you and then you can kind of maneuver and twist it and get it into the right place So I'm just going to shift this so that it's actually in the horizontal position and then I'm going to do as many stitches as I need in order to get it to look kind of even on both sides. They're looking pretty even now so I'm going to shift the focus from those strings back to the propeller strings that have been kind of tightening along the way. And now I can trim them to be about the length of what like a propeller would be proportional to the aircraft. And again, these can be bigger or smaller depending on what you want. Um, I'm going to come back to the horizontal stabilizer, going to tighten this up a little bit more, and then we'll trim these ones as well. And again, the reason why you like tighten and then leave it to rest and then come back and tighten again is because you want to make sure that those strings aren't going to loosen up on you. Um, if they were to loosen up on you, you could just add a little bit of glue to keep them into place. Um, but with this string from Pepperell, um, it, they're, they're really good at just kind of staying in place once you give them a couple of, um, of, uh, of like pulls, like once you tighten it a little bit. So congratulations if you've made it this far. The next step is to make some landing gear and then we're gonna make some wings. And you already know how it be. I'm whipping out the Easy Gimper tool again because I love this thing. For the landing gear, I'm just starting two different box stitch lanyards and I'm only making them about three to four stitches along. They're gonna be pretty small. Um, so you really only need to use maybe like 10 inches of string for this because a lot of the string is going to get trimmed off. Here we go, we have two wheels that we're going to set aside and now we're going to work on the wing. Um, and this is really just going to be a like wall lanyard. I have four white pieces of string and then I have one blue string which is gonna be my main string. I did 50 inches for the white strings and then for the blue one I did about four times that. So my blue string is like very long, <laughs> but you need it so that way you can you know, travel across all four of those strings. And now I'm just going to start this stitch. I will post a link down below to all of the supplementary like material that you will need if you need to learn how to do um, the box stitch step-by-step, -step, the 90 degree stitch step-by-step, -step, this wall stitch step-by-step. -step. Um, I have all of those and they'll be down, down below in the description box for you to check out. But once you get that started, you will want to do about 20 stitches um, for half of the wing. And then we're going to cross over the fuselage and we're going to finish off with the other half of the wing. And then we're going to nearly be done. After that, we'll throw on the landing gear and then we can like call it a day. As you can imagine, we have fast forwarded now and I'm just counting my stitches now. I have about 10 going um, vertically so like times two I'm looking at about 20 for that and now I'm going to insert this over onto the airplane I had to flip it around and use and like throw it on the front side of it because it was kind of annoying going over the horizontal stabilizer and stuff um, but yeah we're just going to throw this on here give this a nice pull and again if it resists you it's okay we'll do one more stitch and it'll listen to you um, and then we're going to finish off by doing, again, 20 more stitches or so, and then we can trim them off. We are so close. You've nearly done it now. What we're going to do is we're going to tighten this a little bit, then we'll let those strings rest. And in the meantime, we're going to add our landing gear. So grab the landing gear that you had set aside from before, and we're going to split it into groups of two strings. And I'm going to tuck two of these strings underneath the strings that are on the bottom of the fuselage. Now 
Then for the two strings that you haven't tucked under, we're going to tuck those ones under now, and then we'll do the same to the other side. This next step is completely optional, but before trimming off these black strings, I wanted to make sure that I add a little bit of glue, just as some like redundancy, basically. Aviation is all about redundancy, so I'm sure you aviators get it. <laughs> From there, we're going to trim off the last of our strings, and then we are basically done. Thank you so much for watching. I had so much fun with this. Please enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.